welcome to the latest Tazian News, and here is a compilation for today. Malaysian court allows rights group to challenge deportation of Myanmar nationals. The Malaysian court grants International Human Rights Group permission to challenge the recent deportation of Myanmar nationals, a major step in a country where the law bars immigration decisions from being questioned in court. The Malaysian government last month deported more than a thousand people it claimed were illegal immigrants on three Myanmar Navy ships. It did so just hours after an interim court ordered banning the group's removal. Pending a legal bid by Amnesty International and Asylum Access to halt the plan amid fears there were asylum seekers and children among the group. New Sing Yu says the ruling by the Kuala Lumpur High Court paves the way for a full hearing on the deportations and extends a stay bearing the removal of another 114 Myanmar nationals until the end of the judicial review. The progression of the legal case is unlikely to bring back those who have already been deported, but could allow similar challenges against future removals. Malaysia is home to more than 154,000 asylum seekers from Myanmar, where the military seized power last month. Activists in the Philippines demand that the government end violence against women and ask President Duterte to resign from his office. Regarding World Women's Day on March 8, over 400 Filipino activists took to the streets and gathered in front of the presidential palace gate in the Philippine capital to demand government to end violence against women. Activists held up banners saying, stop the killings, while others shouted slogans saying, Duterte resign. We would like to underline the fact that we are in a deeper crisis and we are facing a virus far deadlier than COVID. And it is the rotten, anti-people, pro-foreign interest and fascist, macho fascist presidency and leadership of President Duterte. The women's rights activists protest the government's human rights violations and its deadly attacks against critics and the centers of Duterte's administration. The Philippine president has been strongly criticized for publicly making sexist jokes and comments. Duterte say in a statement that there's still much to be done to completely free women from this bondage of inequality and encourage Filipinos to support and empower Filipino women. Singapore continues to provide vaccine program for old age. Local media reports Singapore expand its coronavirus vaccination program to include more seniors and other key workers. Seniors between the ages of 60 and 69 will soon be able to start the registration process to get the vaccine. The city-state of 5.7 million people have largely brought the virus under control with strict rules, mask wearing and contact tracing. Life has returned to near normal, but with limitations on gatherings. Singapore aims to make the voluntary and free vaccinations available to its entire population by the end of 2021. Okay, okay. Hundreds of protesters continue to demand the Prime Minister resigns from his post. Hundreds of demonstrators defy a ban on public gatherings in Thailand, capital Bangkok, to demand the release of protesters who are being held in custody after calling for the resignation of the Prime Minister. They want a former junta leader, Prayut Chang Ocho, to step down and for there to be a reform of the monarchy. Protesters gather in front of the criminal court holding placards with crossed 112 signs referring to a Thai law which prohibits anyone from insulting or defaming the king. I'm here at the criminal court because I want to demand the release of my friends who got arrested because they expressed their political ideas which is basic human rights and it is legitimate. 
Therefore, Article 112 is unfair and it should be abolished. There is no fairness in Thailand, as we can see from what happened in the past. Those who have committed crimes never have to serve the sentence. In this event, the protesters also set the light the photographs of the king. The royal palace has declined to comment on the protest directly. Prime Minister of Thailand sprays hand sanitizer on journalists after answering questions to prevent COVID-19. Thailand's Prime Minister Prayut chan ocha sprays hand sanitizer at journalists to avert answering questions after three former ministers are stripped of the cabinet post last month. The incident happened at the news conference following a weekly cabinet meeting at the government house. Journalists are seen trying to shield their faces as the Prime Minister sprays them with sanitizer. Prayut continues to spray members of the media as he walks away. The lawyers say three ministers stripped from post last month were convicted of insurrections over anti-government protests that culminated in 2014 military coup. The three and five prominent political figures were among 26 leaders of a group, the People's Democratic Reform Committee. The People's Democratic Reform Committee figures are convicted of insurrections, obstruction elections and invading government property during street protests opposing the government of Yungluk Shinawarta before Prayut, then the army chief overthrew her government. Vietnam begins COVID-19 vaccination program after successful virus containment. Vietnam launches its COVID-19 vaccination program with healthcare workers first in queue, even as the Southeast Asian country looks set to contain its first outbreak of the coronavirus since the pandemic began. Thanks to early border closures, target testing and strict, centralized quarantine program. Vietnam has suffered fewer disruptions to its economy than much of Asia. It has kept the total number of infections in the country of 96 million around 2,500 and reported that just 35 deaths. The country's government says last month it will acquire 150 million jabs for its COVID-19 vaccination program, including both those directly purchased and doses obtained via the COVAX vaccine sharing scheme. Vietnam's received first 117,600 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. The government plans free vaccinations with frontline workers, security forces, diplomats, teachers and people over 65 or older among the first to be inoculated. Activists protest in Paris to mark 10 years Fukushima disaster. Around 100 anti-nuclear protesters gather in Paris to mark the 10th anniversary of the Fukushima disaster in Japan. Japan and the rest of the world mourned about 20,000 victims of the massive earthquake and tsunami that struck Japan in 2011, destroying towns and triggering nuclear meltdowns in Fukushima. Huge waves triggered by the 9.0 magnitude quake, one of the strongest on record, crashed into the northeastern coast, crippling the Fukushima Daiichi power plant and forcing more than 160,000 residents to flee as radiation spewed into the air. The world's worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl and the tremor have left survivors struggling to overcome the grief of losing families and towns to the waves in a few frightening hours on the afternoon of March 11, 2011. In Paris, protesters calls for more protections of France nuclear plants to prevent an accident similar to Fukushima in France. South Korea will investigate the deaths of two people after receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. South Korean authorities say they are investigating the deaths of two people who died within the days of receiving AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine. 
Director Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, Jong Yong Kyung, tells a briefing a 63-year-old nursing home patient with cerebrovascular disease developed symptoms including high fever after being given the vaccine four days earlier. The second case is a nursing home patient in his 60s who received the AstraZeneca vaccine at around 2.30 p.m. 33 hours later, he showed symptoms of fever and muscle pain in his whole body. His conditions then improved before it worsened and he passed away at 10 a.m. In addition, Yonhap New Agency reports the men who have moved to a larger hospital but died after showing symptoms of blood poisoning and pneumonia. The agency adds another nursing home patients in his 50s with a cardiac disorder and diabetes died after suffering multiple heart attacks having received the vaccine a day earlier. Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency says it is investigating the cause of the deaths but did not confirm any causal relationship to the vaccine. The agency earlier says it will provide compensation of over 430 million win for deaths from the COVID-19 vaccine. Sinopharm Group provides new vaccines from children aged between 3 to 17 years to fight against pandemic. In Beijing, central business district employees... Chairman of Sinopharm Group Corporation Limited, Holding clinical trial results show that new vaccine by Sinopharm for children aged between 3 and 17 is effective. The company will further expand its annual vaccine production to 1 billion doses this year to better booster the global fight against the pandemic. Yoon Shin Ming, also the deputy to the 13th National People's Congress, says during a video link interview that the Sinopharm's vaccine aims to cover all age groups, from children to senior citizens, and so far the company's vaccines are proved to be safe and effective. Results from clinical trials show that the vaccine for children aged between 3 and 17 years old is effective. Now we are waiting for it to be approved. So generally speaking, Sinopharm's vaccines have reached the targets of safety, effectiveness and convenience. We are all in good condition, probably good. So in 2021, we'll try to reach a vaccine. You also inspires and encourages by General Secretary Xi Jinping's quote, of making Chinese vaccines a global public good, his company plans to further expand the output of vaccine up to 3 billion doses a year in the future. The United Nations Security Council agrees to condemn Myanmar violence, arch military to restrain. The VTC meeting of the Security Council is called to order. The United Nations Security Council agreed on a statement that condemns violence against Myanmar protesters and arduous military restraint. Diplomat says, but dropped language condemning the army takeover as coup and threatening possible further action due to the opposition by China, Russia, India and Vietnam. The British drafted statement, which had to be agreed by consensus, now has to be formally adopted at the council meeting. Myanmar has been in crisis since the army ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi's elected government in a February 1st coup, detained her and officials of her National League for Democracy party and setting up a ruling junta of generals. In addition, the military complained of fraud in a November election. The election commission said the vote was fair. According to the agreed statement seen by Reuters, the Security Council strongly condemns the violence against peaceful protesters, including against women, youth and children. The Council also expresses deep concern at restrictions on medical personnel, civil society, labor union members, journalists and media workers. An advocacy group says more than 60 people have been killed and some 1,800 people detained in a crackdown on daily protests against the coup around the Southeast Asian nation include dozens of journalists are among those arrested. The Council's statement expresses its continuous support for the democratic transition in Myanmar and stresses the need to uphold democratic institutions and processes, refrain from violence, fully respect human rights and fundamental freedoms, and uphold the rule of law. Yeah. 
in addition, an independent United Nations human rights investigator on Myanmar and New York-based Human Rights Watch have called on the Security Council to impose a global arms embargo and targeted economic sanctions on the junta. In a statement to the press days after the coup, the council expresses concern over the state of emergency imposed by the Myanmar military and called for the release of all those detained. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, please wash your hands and continue to maintain social distancing rule. Do not forget to use your mask. Bye.